Who's in the Auburn football sphere? TJ Finley, Auburn quarterback of last couple of seasons, has decided to enter the transfer portal. That's big enough news in and of itself. What else could it mean for Auburn football? We're going to talk about it all right here on this live stream. War Eagle Auburn family, War Eagle E2C Network family, thank you so much for joining us. Whether you're watching live, whether you're watching on the replay, we appreciate you being here, hanging out with us, spending some time, being part of our little family within the Auburn family. On this edition of E2C Network Live, we're discussing the news that I think a lot of people felt like there was a good chance that was going to happen at some point. Uh, in in any regard from the quarterback situation at Auburn right now, a transfer out and maybe what that implies for what's coming up. But the news that came out today, quarterback TJ Finley has decided that he will transfer from Auburn with a caveat. And, and it's not like a, you know, that he's saying he's going to come back, but the caveat being that he will graduate this summer and I've said it a thousand times, but you're a graduate of Auburn. So that's a huge thing right there. That's important to note in this. this isn't someone who's just up and leaving. So someone that's going to complete the, the, the path, so to speak of a college athlete as you would hope they would, and then seek greener pastures out there. So we're going to talk through TJ Finley, his time here at Auburn. And we're going to talk about what that potentially means. We'd love to hear from some of you all as you're watching. Uh, make sure you start off our stream as we always encourage you to do so by smashing that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, that is a huge help uh, for us on this live stream. And we'd love to know who's here chatting with us. So if you can uh, post right now in the comments where you're watching from your city and your state. And if you're international, you can do the same. And then, uh, obviously, a War Eagle is always good to know, too. If we've got any rogue fans from other places out there, you can identify yourselves if you'd like to. <laughs> you can always participate in that. So, I uh, see John Stokes is already checking in. Thank you so much. He just reminded me because he is a Booster Club member. We have opened up the phone lines for Booster Club members if you want to call in. So, please feel free to take advantage of that if you want to do so. It is on the Patreon app. Would love. Uh, to hear from some of you or see your smiling faces tonight, our Booster Club members. So thank you guys so much uh, for uh, being members there. And that's one of your perks that you get on special live streams like this. A lot of people starting to check in here from all over the place. Good to see so many smiling regular faces, some faces we don't see as often, but also people that we see uh, quite often. Let's see. Uh, I, I, a lot of people are already jumping the gun here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, getting right into what they think it means. And I, I knew that's where this was going to be. But uh, forgive me for a second. I do want to start off the stream, and I, I really want to focus in on what you guys want to talk about this mainly. So that's what this will be about. But I do want to say uh, this part of this. Whenever someone leaves Auburn, I usually don't have any, and usually I say 99% of the time, don't have any ill will towards them. There may be a situation where it feels a little bit like, ah, you know, okay, whatever. But um, this one with his decision, and, and this is not a knock on those that don't choose to do so, um, TJ Finley deciding that he will graduate and then transfer. I have a lot of respect for that. Um, it, it just earns that extra bit of respect from me. So I want that to be said out front. Uh, TJ Finley, I think, is doing it what I would be say is the right way, the preferred way in my eyes of exiting from a program. So I do want us to go on the record saying that. I also don't want this to become a TJ Finley bash show. And I know that instantly turns some of y'all off and y'all will leave the stream right now because that's all you really want to do is hide behind your little uh, anonymous handles and make nasty comments about the dude. So I see it on social media all the time. So that's not what this is going to be about. We will be real. We will talk about some real perspectives about this. But uh, it, we're going to try to walk that fine line of being supportive of someone who is going to be an alumni going forward. But also the reality of what he was and wasn't able to accomplish during his time here and what that potentially means for Auburn. Uh, if you look at his time here, probably not a ton of successes to really latch on to outside of a Georgia state magical moment, which I saw in person. And to this day, 
<laughs> I, I still don't believe what I saw. But uh, outside of that, there's really not any big moments. Now, that Iron Bowl, uh, let me back that up. That Iron Bowl in 2019, uh, 20, excuse me, let me back up here, 2021, uh, where injured and without Bo Nix, he steps in and frankly leads what could have been one of the biggest upsets in quite some time, almost. And um, so that's that's something to be commendable as well for him. So I definitely... I think there are a few things out there we can latch on to and then some obviously not so great things. But in my mind, it's always better to remember uh, the good things that obviously opens the door now for people that are here. Robbie Ashford holding Gurner, Hank Brown, who's coming in as a commit from this year. And now it obviously asks the question with him entering the portal. Does he know something? It could mean that if you look at the, the tea leaves, so to speak, if you look where the smoke is. You're probably saying, hmm, <laughs> it's that Casey Thompson, the guy from Michigan State. And then there's the old Grayson McCall thing out there. Does that mean that he is coming to Auburn? I don't know. But uh, yeah, lots to discuss with it. So let's get into some of what you guys are saying. And obviously, I'm going to try to screen these as much as I can if you do want to be on have your, your comment displayed. The best thing to do is to not take shots at somebody. So remember that as always. Um, Drip Edit says, uh, having some bad moments. Love TJ as a player. P.S. I got his first autograph at Auburn. I don't know if, how you would prove it was his first autograph, but maybe you can. I don't know. But uh, that man was tall. I remember the first time I saw him at Tiger Walk. I was like, good Lord. He's bigger than, uh, he's taller than Cam Newton. Um. Let's see here. So Sean's kind of inferring here. Let's well, let's see here. We just had Casey Thompson on a visit and then TJ Finley jumps in. And just as soon as he leaves his visit, uh, wonder what that means. Of course, if you read how things go out, it's easy to walk. That That is the easy narrative to go with. And sometimes the easiest narrative is the correct narrative. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Uh, Devin, I agree. I think people do need to be reasonable and kind, but unfortunately we've got adults that don't know how to, I would should, I say adults in quotation marks, adults that don't know how to do that. Robin Powell. I wish TJ the best. I really liked him as a person. I don't think he was given the best chance. He got hurt pretty soon. Uh, he got hurt pretty soon after he started last year. So we didn't really see what he could do. Uh, so I will, I'll tackle this a couple different ways, Robin, with what you said. And I think it's got a, some interesting points there. I think that, any quarterback the last two seasons, really three, maybe four, um, is beholden to some things that are outside of their control. And it, obviously there's a lot of things always outside of one particular player's control, but I, there's a lot of circumstances this that a quarterback should not be judged by. However, there are also opportunities that present themselves, and I, I don't know that TJ took advantage of the opportunities, injured or not, that were in front of him to warrant goodwill, security here at Auburn. Um, not from a lack of trying, not saying it wasn't a good effort, and and he did his he didn't try his best. But that's just kind of the dichotomy of this. I do think he was given a fair shot, but it doesn't mean it was the easiest shot. Because I think that's a fair way maybe to say it. Um, Robbie, Kevin's here. Good to see you, Kevin. Our opt, uh, Captain Optimism. Robbie Asher will be the starting quarterback next season. Maybe, maybe. And uh, I'm still rooting for all the guys there. But obviously there are other things at play here. Uh, Sean says that TJ doesn't fit in the SEC. He's more of a West Coast quarterback. I'm I'm curious what you mean by that, Sean. Can you, let, let me hear a little bit more about that. What do you mean? I, you may know exactly what you mean by that, but I don't know that other people watching know, and I don't necessarily know what you mean by that. Define West Coast quarterback for me. What is that to you? Because I think any quarterback, given the right parameters, given the right compliments, can work. Did you see Stetson Bennett? There's no one type of quarterback that's best for the SEC. Uh, there is simply who finds who is talented enough to work with what they have. And sometimes that talent has to exceed what they have. Some people would make that argument for Cam Newton. But 
Um, I'm just curious what you what you mean by a West Coast quarterback. I, if you're implying that he's more of a he's a less mobile quarterback, yes. I just knocked that around. Uh, yes, I completely completely agree with that. But um, you know, I think there are a couple of different ways to discuss that. Elliot says, "I'm back. Where you been, Elliot? Happy to see you here, though." Um, let's see here. Apparently, Dusty says he made this prediction. Where was that one? Uh, my prediction is that Auburn will start a quarterback next season. There you go. <laughs> hey, don't put it past. <laughs> There's so many crazy things have happened this year. Don't uh, don't put it past there. John is putting his um, vote in the Thompson camp. I think just like we we say with the TJ Finley news, Casey Thompson visiting. You read the tea leaves, right? Um, I think that's the obvious route to go there. And sometimes the obvious route is the, yeah, the way to go there. Um, Thomas says, got to have some faith in freeze and the staff to develop and make the right call with the portal. Waiting is the hard part, but we got no other option. We do have other options. I know you don't mean it this way. I know you will enough to know that's not what you meant, but we have um, at least two. I don't know what Hank Brown's, would look like at the cause level Two two solid options here. Are they what's best for Auburn? We won't know until we fill out the quarterback room. Here's what you, here's what you do know. Here's what it officially means. There is a quarterback spot open at Auburn. Will it be Casey Thompson? Will it be the guy from Michigan state? I've yet to memorize his name, the elusive and you know, guy out there that everybody's still salivating over Grayson McCall. Maybe he comes, maybe he does. I just, I I'm starting to disbelieve that the guy even exists because I've been hearing so long. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. I just, I don't believe that at this point, but I hope I'm wrong. It's kind of like the Devin Cambridge thing for basketball. Anyway, um, there are two guys that are here and there's a spot open. Somebody is going to be coming to be part of the Auburn quarterback room. The question is who? Uh, let's see. Elliot says Ashford is the quarterback. He's definitely got the leg up over, over most people. We don't need anything from Michigan. <laughs> now, listen, if we're going to take something from Michigan, I'd much prefer it to be Michigan state. I am forever endeared to Michigan state for them beating Ohio state to put us into the national title game in 2013. Uh, so I, if, they can do no wrong in my eyes at this point. Go green, go white is what I say. Uh, yeah, so here's a great point around this news. Um, didn't Trevon Reed say he thought Grenier would get it, the call if uh, if we don't get a transfer? Yeah, I mean, that's his take, and he is an assistant coach of sorts, more of, I think, his official title is director of player development or some some of those weird titles. Uh, he's connected enough and involved enough to know, have an educated answer on that. Uh, I would imagine though, that I, I would put more stock in what positional coaches are saying and things like that. And most of that's going to be close to the best. And I love Trevon Reed. Are we done yet? Trevon? <laughs> I hope not. So, um, so yes, uh, Grenier, Holden Grenier, may Grenier, Grenier, how do you say it? Grenier, I think is how you are supposed to say it. He may in fact be in the lead, but we don't know. There was nothing we could take away solid from spring practice and nothing we could take away solid from the spring game. To We're basically guessing at this point. Sean, given some clarification about his West Coast uh, commentary, in the SEC, quarterbacks have to be a little bit more mobile because of the defense, and he's not in the West. Their defense are not as good as ours, so their quarterback has time to pass, and I just think he would fit there. Good explanation. Now I understand where you're coming from. Got no qualms with that. So I, I see where, what your perspective is. Robin says, I do like Thompson. He's dynamic, a dual threat, and, he, and it's um, last year, so he will really uh, – so it's his last year. He'll really work hard to shine. Well, I, I'd hope anybody would. Um, it, it, if it is his last year, I haven't, I'll be honest with you guys, most of you that are here, you know that I don't do a lot of diving into recruiting and transfer before they commit that yeah, that's, this is not that place. Now we did put out a video today about our brand new commitment. Hope you'll go check that out. We do talk about recruiting and obviously we're talking about transfer portal stuff here, 
we're, we're not going to dive into all that kind of stuff. There are people, people who do that very well. But um, in terms of when you think about someone like Thompson coming in and having one year to prove if that's the, the amount of time he has left, then maybe, yes, you're, you, that's a little bit of an extra motivation. It would fit very nicely in with some of these younger guys not feeling like they need to leave. You got Robbie, who's going to have, after this year, two more years of eligibility. Holden, who's going to have three, because he, I believe he redshirted. Um, Walker White, Hank Brown is going to have all of his years, I'm sure. Walker White will come in as a freshman. You got all these young guys building up the future. You almost need that one quarterback, either the guys who are already here or TJ, if he had decided to stay, to hold you over until the next time. So maybe that's why it checks all the boxes there. Yes, TJ was very tall. I can I can vouch for that. Very, very tall. Uh, so, so tall. I did like a, I, I was probably creepy and just like stared at him as he went through Tiger Woods. Like, what the heck, man? You know? Um, and he, the, the, you know, he got the knock of being a statue, which there were times him being statue like was a good thing. It really was because he was sometimes harder to bring down. Now, when the entire offensive line doesn't block for you, you, not many people can stand up to that. The poet says, I think Ashford would be the perfect choice, especially believing freeze as the quarterback whisperer. Um, yeah, I could see why you'd think that. I could definitely see why you think that, but I think that's us typecasting a certain type of quarterback into that and not necessarily knowing what coach freeze wants to do going forward. You know, one of the things I'm a big Gus Malzahn fan and a Gus, Ma Gus Malzahn apologist. One of the knocks on him was that he didn't uh, make a lot of adjustments and how he wanted to do things over year over year. And um, if that was the case, and if you agree with that sentiment, I would hope that'd be the case with Hugh freeze and what he wants to do. Now he's bringing in Philip Montgomery or brought in Philip Montgomery and he's going to have his, way with the offense as much as Hugh Freeze will allow him to. <laughs> and I'd be said he will. And uh, I got to believe that maybe there's going to be a few wrinkles there. Maybe a mobile quarterback's not exactly what's best for us this year. Who knows? We have no clue. The best thing about this offense is us and the rest of the world has no clue what they're going to do. All they know is what Hugh Freeze has done. Philip Montgomery has done and what the guys that are here still are capable of that have been here at Auburn, which are not many um, offensively, especially on the offensive line and guess quarterback now um, can do. That's all they know. They have no idea what this makeup. And, and for us as fans, that's frustrating for us as fans. We want to know things, but that is still a, an advantage we have at this point. So we'll see. Um, uh, was Thorn was the Mich Michigan State guy. Thank you. That's I, I, I cannot get his name plugged in here quite yet. Um, but yes, I had to I had to think about that a little bit. So obviously, where we're sitting at right now, TJ Finley has left, opens up a spot. Um, it's available. Will somebody like a Casey Thompson, Thorn, McCall? Somebody we don't know come and fill that boy. The question, the answer is yes. Somebody is going to take that spot, but who will it be? Betting money is probably in the Casey Thompson corner. There seems to be, um, you know, interest elsewhere. If you believe in Grayson McCall still. <laughs> Uh, if Ashford could develop some touch on his passing, that would be an improvement. Don't always have to gun the passes. Well, he's young too, John. So remember that uh, he's got one year under a system that was falling apart and uh, it takes time to get that. So I really do think um, we shouldn't judge him too much on that. And I don't think you are. I'm just making that statement. Um, I think he clearly has some things that he's got to work on to be a better quarterback. All of them do. But what we've seen out of Robbie, I like a lot of what I see, and it, it makes me intrigued for what he could do under Hugh Freeze. So 
Um, one of the things here now too, with the TJ Finley news that obviously outside of, does this mean a transfer quarterbacks come? Probably so. Well, definitely. So it just may, we don't know who that is and what their expectations for playing might be. This now shortens currently the field for the quarterback room. TJ is gone. So that means it's a Robbie and Holden world right now. Depends on who you talk to. If you talk to like, you know, someone, I think it was Devin said, uh, Trevon it was, and I remember this clip, I think from a podcast um, quoted as saying Holden would be the guy today or that moment. But Robbie was also dealing all spring with a shoulder, shoulder injury. It's a two way race at this point. Someone else wants to insert themselves into the mix. Here's what I do think. And what I believe is that Hugh freeze is going to give all of the guys probably mainly three, whoever that transfer quarterback is equal opportunity to prove they need to be the guy. This is open season for everybody. It's kind of fun. Actually feels new and fresh, even with some familiar faces like Robbie and Holden steer still here. Barrett Trotter coming back. Hey, listen, uh, Barrett Trotter may not have had the best start, but man, did he figure out a way to go out like a champ in that bowl game? I mean, could have couldn't have written it better for himself. Just walked, just came out and balled out and said, you know what? Peace out, players. <laughs> Corey, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, as a reminder, if you are a Booster Club member, you can take advantage of the call and link tonight. So uh don't have to, but it's there for you if you guys would like to to check in with me and share your thoughts on TJ leaving and uh anything else. Um Robbie can move the sticks. I don't know how he does it. I watched us beat Tennessee in 2013, completing two passes. Uh, we scored over 50 points that day. It was a different system, a different different players, all that stuff. Yes, Robbie with his legs can definitely move the sticks, but we do need Robbie to progress as a, a passer. And um, what well, it would be um, since February, really, where they were settled and started – running the Hugh free system, at least the way of operating the program, not necessarily practice starting. So, you know, by September, it'll be seven, six to seven months that you've been in the system. I don't know if you can completely get to where you need to be in that time as a young guy, who's already not been set up for success, but we'll see. Same thing has got to be, you know, is expected of a transfer quarterback that may come in to fill TJ spot. Thompson has shoulder concerns too. too. Not overly excited about having multiple quarterbacks with that issue if we can help it. Or you could look at it another way, Dusty. We got insurance because we got guys everywhere. <laughs> here's, here's one way to look at the situation. Um, I know there are very few that are upset that TJ is leaving. I get that. I'm not dumb. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that the collective thought is we're glad we're moving on from TJ. I hope that people will be very kind when they express that. Some of you still don't get that, but um, I, I hope that we're thankful that we have viable options at quarterback outside of even the transfer coming in and that these guys have different skill sets. Seems like Holden might be the more complete package, so to speak. Robbie, the athletic phenom with some areas and improvements that need to be made, but we've seen like what that potential could be in some areas, especially that throw in the iron bowl. And then who knows what Hank Brown may be able to do and what this transfer quarterback could do. So if you're worried about injuries, I get it. Yeah. Uh, but there are serviceable options. This isn't Bo Nix, and then your backup quarterback was oh, – I forget what the situation was at that point, but it was really bad. It was – it was – it was. God, what was his name? But it, it was – there was a big drop-off from that point. Oh, it, I guess it would have been Malik Willis, but that's not necessarily a drop. We just didn't know what he could do outside of a, co a high school tape. Not Malik Willis. Um Wow, gosh, the guy from Texas. I've already got him out of my head. Somebody help me. Somebody help me out here. What do you think? All right, so TJ leaves. At, kind of circle back around to some of the stuff that we've uh, already talked, but keep your comments coming here. 
Uh, I am sad to see him go in terms of depth and in terms of, you know, it's just sad to see anybody leave. I understand this is probably what's best for TJ, especially if they do bring in someone else. But what I am super excited and respect him so much for is leaving as a graduate. That is, in my opinion, the preferred way, the right way to leave this situation. You graduate. Bo did that. Several other players would do that. And those that don't do that, I, I get it. It's not always in the cards for some people. They got to make a change when they need to make a change, when an opportunity presents themselves. But uh, I love that he's going to graduate and he put that in his goodbye message. And, you know, obviously you put your best face forward most of the time on social media. Uh, and he seems to have handled that the right way. Hope he continues to do that. So um, I wish TJ nothing but the best, but I'm excited for what his departure means in terms of what is available space-wise to come in. Is that a Casey Thompson? Is that a Thorn from Michigan State? Is that a Grayson McCall? Is it a person we don't know? Is there anybody out there that you guys are thinking about that we haven't mentioned yet that might want to come in and be part of a nice competition? Um, Robin says that Robbie is not it, not now. I'm glad you put that in there. You don't know that he's not it, but I'm glad you put that in there. Uh, that he is not right now, maybe not. We don't right now, sure, because we're only operating enough what we know. We don't know, though. We don't know how he's progressed even throughout the spring because nobody was able to showcase that in the spring game. So he could have gotten more accurate. I mean, that was a pretty good throw he threw in the spring game. Just saying. Now his quarterback's over at or, Wide receiver he threw twos at Colorado now, but that's besides the point. So um, from what we know, he has got some areas to grow, but maybe he has grown that way. Just a lot of unknowns. We're all, we're all just operating off of speculation at this point. Uh, need to find another way to use Ashford. Ru uh, running sweeps tight end. He's added nine. You want him at a tight end? Is that what you're saying? He's not big enough for a tight end. I think he's like six foot one, maybe 200 and something pounds. He's a, not even 200 pounds. He's a dynamic runner, not the best quarterback yet. Yet is the operative term there. Um, here's what I do think. Let's just go with the popular narrative right now. You bring in a transfer quarterback. Let's just say it's Casey Thompson, right? Maybe one year of eligibility is what it seems like it's going to be prone to injuries, which means you're going to need to probably – utilize someone else a lot seems to set up pretty nicely for Robbie to come in and throw it a little bit, but also to utilize what you do best while you develop as a quarterback. So think about it that way. The TJ Finley departure, again, aside from your feelings about TJ opens up an opportunity, not just for the now at Auburn uh, football's quarterback position in terms of maybe maximizing potential this year, but what does it do? for the quarterbacks that are already here and going to come in also. Does it allow that extra year for a Robbie Ashford, who some feel that needs areas of improvement, accuracy, things like that, he can get that. Same thing for Holden as well. It could do wonders for the entire quarterback room. We don't know. We're just speculating. But I can see the value and the benefit of that. Um. Let's see here. Sean says, wooden Bo Nix back of Grant. I don't know what that means, so you'll have to clarify there. Was it, wasn't Bo Nix back of Grant? I can't remember. I can't even remember. <laughs> there we go. There was a clarify. Um, Todd, I think I haven't seen you comment all stream, so I'm assuming you're coming a little late to the game. So I don't know if you're referring to me or to someone in the chat. I, personally, I'm not saying he's not a good quarterback. I think he is a good, he's got potential to be a very, very good quarterback, especially with his skill set. Um, yeah, and I think that's a good point to bring up. Uh, he was, I won't think he was hurt all last year, but he was a hurt a good portion of him. He was hurt during spring. Uh, so, yeah, it's hard to judge somebody, even with that parameter of being hurt, on what, they could be capable of given what they had to work with. Same goes for TJ who started our conversation tonight. I'm going to defend him on that. Do I think TJ is the greatest quarterback that's ever come through Auburn? And we just didn't know it. No, 
But do I think he had a lot more to show and offer if he was given better opportunities, not opportunities, given better support, coaching, teammate, strategy, otherwise? Yes. Stetson Bennett is your choice. Some of the Alabama quarterbacks that have come through, not like we're not talking like Tua and Bryson and all those stuff, guys that are clearly athletes and just great quarterbacks. But some of these quarterbacks at Alabama you never hear of. Why were they so good when they were there? Because they were surrounded by great teammates. That's why it's a great, um, yeah. Grant Loy. God, how have I forgotten about Grant? Yes, he was one of the backups, but I don't remember exactly where he fell in the depth chart. I felt like there was one more between them, but maybe it was Grant Loy. Maybe it was. Hmm. Man, now I'm really intrigued by that. Um, let's see. Oh, about the transfers from Colorado. Well, I, uh, since we're really just talking quarterbacks now, but I don't think there's any quarterbacks from there that we're going to be taking. Shadur Sanders is not coming. <laughs> I'm sure. Listen, I, I'm sure everybody contacted all of those, uh, potential guys coming from Colorado. Now, listen, no knock on, I'm not trying to knock the guys from Colorado. You know, the stick was, they weren't able to cut it there. Do you really want somebody's, it's a, it's a difficult slope and difficult thing to say here, but somebody's leftovers. Cause that's essentially what you're getting when you're taking a transfer quarterback here too. But to me, that situation just feels weird. I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing. Todd, you're on the other video from today. Uh, the baseball one, you're on the baseball show. I didn't see you there, but either I'm happy you were there. If you were, um, he backed up the year before TJ talking about Grant Loy. So yeah, so maybe it was Grant Loy and then that was it. But yeah, I just remember there was one year where we were like, that's Bo Nix and that's it. <laughs> that's all we needed, frankly, but it was a little scary in terms of that. This time, even with injured quarterbacks, you have got a lot, a lot of options. Cam Newton has a COVID year, right? <sighs> Not quite. All right, we're going to keep talking, take some of your comments and questions, so keep them coming. But let me go ahead and use this time real quick to kind of keep uh, you informed, especially of those of you I haven't seen a lot of lately, at least in the chat, of what we got coming up uh, this week. Our next scheduled live stream is going to be tomorrow night, 8 p.m. We're always live at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday nights, a call-in night, not just Booster Club members. Anybody can call in tomorrow night. You don't have to be on camera. You can just be on the phone. Don't miss that is our Auburn family night tomorrow night. Would love to see you all here again. We'll talk some more about this. We'll talk about anything else that's happening. A little bit about the recruit maybe that just came in and plenty of other things related to Auburn uh, sports, culture, and the Auburn family itself. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, it's a huge help to us, helping us reach our goal of 4,000 um, subscribers in this giveaway that we're doing right now and of course you could be a channel member for one dollar you could even be a booster club member for one dollar a month and other tiers as well obviously tonight the uh, phone line was available to booster club members if they wanted it all those things are available in the stream in fact if you stay at the end of this stream you'll go straight over to a page for tomorrow night's live stream and you can go ahead and hit the like i know it seems silly to do that in advance but if you do that hit the notify me bell button right there on that page It'll let you know. It, it's a huge help if you can do that, too. Here's the second reference to Barrett Trotter again tonight. I think Barrett Trotter's done, too. He can always re-enroll in school and get another degree. He could. He just can't play again. <clears throat> you know, that, that time is done. Wishful thinking, right? But, you know, in all seriousness here, I don't know where TJ is going to go um, from this point forward. I don't know what, you know, what situation suits him. I don't know what his aspirations are. I'm just really happy the guy's got a degree from Auburn at the end of the summer, obviously, if he follows through and com completes everything he needs to. Uh, and the good thing now is that he's announcing this. He can now kind of remove himself from – he opens up a spot. He can remove – himself from the program the responsibilities of that and still because he's going to be a graduate and because he's given to this team for the last two and a half years he can uh, utilize the facilities and get himself right for where he needs to be and what he wants to do next so i i do wish him well 
and very thankful for the help he was able to give us in some very specific areas too. But I'm also thankful for the uh, opportunities that now are presented by TJ deciding to transfer officially. Isn't it nice now for the, the speculation to be over and we're just moving on with it? Um, now, Big Simp, those of, you, those of you that know me well here know that me and Chris Todd, I don't know him personally, so this is just me being funny, but me and Chris Todd have beef with my boy Cody Burns. But we'll get into that another day. Um, <clears throat> Todd, that's bad. I'm not even going to go there. Uh, Thomas says this will be his second time removing himself from a program, but wish him well. Yeah, and so there's that stigma too now. But listen, in a transfer portal situation in this world we live in, I don't fault these kids for taking advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. I, I can question whether it's the right decision for some of them to do that. This one I think is probably the right situation, given what was before him and what was before us. It's probably, I don't want to compare it to the Bonix situation, but it doesn't feel like there's a lot of goodwill between both sides. Not to say that, you know, I think some people do hate him, but, you know, I, I think it was, it's a good to go off into the sunset and do something different. And just like Bo is having success at Oregon, sucks that it's not here. But I wish him well at that. But yes, he did leave LSU. Um, that situation, I kind of understand a little bit too, because if my timeline is correct, this is during the Ed Orgeron issues and stuff like that. He probably knew something was coming down. It was like, get me out of here. And also probably depth chart reasons too. Um, but yeah, so there's a, there's a certain way to look at that. Uh, as well. All right. So let's do final comments, questions, I guess, derogatory rebuttals about TJ leaving potential quarterback is, are they already here? Are they stepping up regardless of who comes in? Who do you think comes in and takes TJ spot? Because that here's what we know. TJ is leaving T well, as of now, TJ is entering the portal and uh, graduating from Auburn. So we'll be an alumni. So always remember, He's part of the family and still will be. You don't have to be an alumni to be part of the family, but he gets that little special notch right there because he's going to be a graduate. There's a spot opened up, and the prevailing consensus would be that it would be a Casey Thompson of Nebraska, Thorne from Michigan State, and still the elusive Grayson McCall from uh, Charleston Southern, who I was told – definitively it's him. We're just waiting so many times by so many people and people I trust and it still hasn't happened yet. So I will continue to wait on that. But if you have any other final thoughts around any of those subjects, put them in right now as we kind of close our time together and be sure to stay toward the end so you can hit the like button and hit the notify me bell for that upcoming live stream tomorrow night. Woody Barrett got any eligibility or is he available? I don't know what he's doing anymore. It's hard for me to it's hard for me to keep track of all the Auburn sports stuff that we do here, much less players once they leave, especially those that chose to leave Auburn and do something else. Hurry up, September, ready for some football. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know we all are. Todd, are you throwing out a prediction that'll be the Coastal Carolina quarterback? Is that your official? How about this? Quick poll of the room. We got a lot of people watching currently right now. Right now in the chat post who you think the quarterback who transfers in will be because there is a spot available. So someone's going to take it. Is it Casey Thompson? Is it Thorne from Michigan state? Is it Grayson McCall? Is it someone we don't know yet? What say you quick poll of the room. Let's have that be kind of our final moment here on the live stream tonight. Corey says, just a thought, when you transfer a lot of times, when do you realize that you don't belong in the big boys' playground, just any player in general, because I've seen it here and there? I think I understand what you're getting at, Corey. I don't think I necessarily agree with it, but I, I think I understand what you're trying to say there. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. I just don't know that I completely I'm on that point. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, we got predictions coming in. Casey Thompson, Grayson McCall, 
Thompson. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, that ship has sailed, my friend. Casey Thompson, Grayson McCall, Brad Johnson's son. So what's his? Is it Brad Johnson Jr.? Is that his name? I can't remember. Um, is that an option? Do y'all want to do an LSU quarterback again? <laughs> oh, well, actually, he's he's at Texas A&M now, isn't he? Do you want to do a Texas A&M quarterback again? We tried that with Zach, and it didn't work out. So, yeah, and this kind of goes back to what Dusty was talking about a little bit earlier about uh, it making him nervous about guys with shoulder issues. We saw that with Zach, and here we are. I still do wonder what would have happened if Zach Calzada had been the quarterback. I'm not saying he was definitely going to be the fix for all of that, but I, I just – you just wonder, don't you? Did I say Charleston? Is that what I keep doing? I hope y'all understood what I mean. Coastal Carolina, not Charleston. My apologies. It's these little schools. It's hard to get them uh, mixed up. Or it is easy to get them mixed up. Um, I'm betting the guy from Nebraska. But one of the ones on the roster will start at the end of the year. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, the more we talk about it, frankly, um, I kind of like the scenario I put forward. Let this guy come in, whoever it is, for one more year maybe and give the other quarterbacks time to develop under Hugh Freeze. Set um, a couple other predictions coming here. To, uh, I forget how you say his name. Tuale? Tuale? Is that how you say his name? To his brother? Is that who you're talking about, Thomas? <laughs> I don't know. Is he? No, wait. His name is Tuv either way. Doesn't matter. I don't know who you're, who you were suggesting there. I would love the scenario to set up like this. Let's just, again, Casey Thompson comes in, takes TJ's spot. He starts. Let's just, let's just play that. TJ by this time will be a junior comes in, has an outstanding year because he's developed as a quarterback, already an athlete. And then he leaves. By that time, yes, it's a quarterback every year. Holden Gurner's also had time to develop, maybe for his last two years, giving Walker White a chance to redshirt, to develop even further, and maybe as a redshirt sophomore, redshirt junior, he's able to start fully developed, and then you've got a pipeline, similar to what Alabama has done, just rotates in and out. So think about it that way, folks. This could be a really good thing. We don't know. We're just speculating, and I'm glad we have some optimism about it. Um. Anyway, to his little brother. I thought that's who you were referring to, but I thought his name was spelled differently. I don't know. Anyway, you guys have been a great crowd tonight. I figured we'd have a good crowd for this. Hope to see y'all tomorrow night. It's a little bit more of an informal night. We'll discuss this some more other sports stuff. Uh, really hope that y'all be here on our Wednesday night shows, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss it. It's always a good time when we're together as the Auburn family on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Thank you guys for being here. Good luck to TJ. Good luck to our quarterbacks that are here. And we'll eagerly wait to see what happens in the transfer portal for Auburn football and another Auburn football quarterback coming in. Till then, or Eagle.